Welcome back. Today, I have a little bit of a different video. I recently did a video on this Fisher Brothers launch, primarily made by TJ Fisher with the pivots from Frank Fisher. Um, and in that video, there was a comment from a good friend, Will, asking for a comparison video between the launch and the Cobra. Now, he had mentioned possibly using his Cobra, but timing, trying to get together, have him ship his in, whatnot, eh, I figured I would just use my Cobra. So this is a TJ Fisher Cobra versus the Fisher Brothers launch. And I don't think that TJ Todd Jr. gets an, I, I'm always talking about Frank Fisher. I have a few battles, uh, the model from Frank. And so a lot of my videos kind of stem around the battle because, well, that's just kind of is still my grail knife that I own. I, I, I haven't really wanted a different grail since then. Um, but I don't know that I've done enough talking about TJ. I think he's kind of in the background between Todd Sr. and Frank. And TJ is just kind of there in the background doing his thing and maybe not getting enough credit. So I wanted to really give a shout out to him. Uh, I am filming this on Thanksgiving morning of 2023, if anybody cares. And something I am thankful for is the fact that I have a great knife collection and I have been able to become friends with a lot of great makers, the Fisher family in general. So you can see a lot of similarities between TJ's model models. Now, TJ kind of in the last few months has been a little bit on the outside, um, kind of went dark for a little bit, went through some family stuff, life, all of that, right? I get it but he's back in the saddle right now and he's starting to turn out some great stuff. And there will be more new knives coming from him through the channel because I have another thing I'm super thankful for is a couple of really good friends that buy really high-end knives like Aussie Mike, who owns this one and has it shipped to me. Like my friend Ty Addiction, who actually had this built brand new for him and since worked a trade and some banter back and forth and some horse trading. And I got to add this to my personal collection. So I will be seeing some new things from TJ very soon. But this is a really a sweet spot size wise from TJ and just in general. Little size comparison here just to give you an idea with the Sharpie. Trying to kind of set it so you can see Sharpie. But um, yeah, these are just great. So these are a couple of different configurations, right? This is really just a plain, uh, I don't want to say plain Jane. When you say plain Jane, I think you're uh, almost maybe diminishing what it is. And that really was brought to my attention from my very good friend, Alex, uh, the co-host on the EDC Hour. And I referred to several Fisher knives as plain Janes, and they're really not. They are plainer than maybe this half dress version or if we want to kind of compare a more plainer version from Todd Sr. to a more dressy version from Todd Sr., it, again, it's not a plain Jane. When you think plain Jane, you're thinking, uh, well, I don't know. What do you guys think of when you, when you hear plain Jane? I kind of think of it as more of just a basic knife. However, there is nothing basic about a handmade custom. Maybe this is a better um, 
term for plain Jane, a 40, 45, you know, 40, $50 Kubi from Amazon. Overseas knife, mass produced. Just this particular one is all blacked out. You can get it in multiple different variations. Um, and it works great. Very plain, $50, you know, throwaway knife. If You know, do you... So I struggle and I will use plain Jane probably in its wrong terminology sometimes just because I'm referring to it as plainer than a dressier model. <clears throat> but there's nothing plain about this. It's a handmade custom. It runs fantastically. It works in the pocket amazingly. 154 cm, I believe, is typically what TJ and the Fishers use on their more plain blades, mono steel blades, if you will. Some uh, just dark anodizing on the titanium, the speed holes, and a little splash of color with the pivot collars. This thing is a great user knife. The shape is great. You can really get some purchase here on the spine with the harpoon style blade, the modified sheep's foot, if you will, um, is great for getting in and doing work. You can get to the tip really easily and do some work. This one, when I did the first initial video, I called it a fancy user because I was going to carry this one daily for a while if I ever bought it. And I did buy it and I did carry it daily because it's a great blade shape. It's a great size. The tip is a little bit higher up. So it does not lend itself to precise cutting just as much because you have to get at a different angle to get to the tip, right? That's the beauty of this blade shape. They both work incredibly well. This one had a slight bit of lock stick and I did send it back to TJ and he reworked it and it's perfect. He calls this a half dresser because it's just titanium scales with a Sanmai blade and Sanmai pocket clip. This one has been Cerakoted white and the polished perimeters to give it a little bit more pizzazz, if you will. I love it. Although I equally love this one. So I'm torn between the two. Fortunately, I don't need to decide because I only own the one. <clears throat> but I'm not generally a speed hole type of person. However, the way TJ puts together the speed holes, it just works. It doesn't look out of place. I like the fact, especially with the Sanmai bladed one, you can see the blade through the holes and it gives it a little bit of a wow factor. I think this is just an absolutely beautiful knife. And I'm honored and thankful to have it in my collection. Thank you, Chris over at Tie Addiction for swapping with me. I think we did some horse trading. I don't remember the exact details. Um, but even with the monochrome blade, or the mono steel blade. This one works great because the speed holes kind of blend in because you're looking through and seeing black, that, that acid washed, black stone wash, whatever you want to call it on this blade, which is a fantastic finish because it doesn't show scratches because there's scratches built in, which is super cool. So anyway, have I rambled enough to explain that I, I just love the Fisher family? Everything about them, from TJ to Todd Sr. To Todd Sr. again with the prototype battle inspired by Frank Fisher's design. Yeah, from exotic, crazy exotic, to pretty standard basic materials. The quality and the craftsmanship is there with all three of them. Can't judge a book by its cover. Just because it looks plain doesn't mean there's anything plain about it. So with that, 
Thanks for watching. I'll put my TJ Fisher playlist up here in the corner because it's worth checking out. His books are open. Reach out to him on Facebook or Instagram is the easiest way. Tell him I sent you. I don't get anything out of it, but it's nice to just kind of keep that networking going. Tell him you saw it on my channel and see if he can build you something. He's got several models, the Cobra in a multiple sizes. The Launch, there's a smaller one, the Lash. There's a Kamehameha. There's a King Kamehameha. There's a Slim Cobra. Like, what's great about TJ and Frank and Todd is they're super great to work with. And if you've got something in your head, material-wise, they can probably put it together. So reach out to him. Get your name on the books. I think he's actually working on Furies now, which is a Frank design that TJ is going to start to build. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. So let me know your thoughts. I greatly appreciate it and have yourselves a fantastic day. Thank you for watching.